Hi, this is episode 64 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. One of the top things that stops people from learning programming is simply having a plan on deciding where to start. In this guide, I'm gonna walk through some strategies to help you learn how to code completely from scratch. I've been a developer for a number of years. I taught myself how to code and I've witnessed a wide variety of educational techniques for learning programming over the past decade. Some of the strategies I've seen are good, others are simply a waste of time. This list contains the strategies that have stood the test of time and will help you launch your own coding journey. First and foremost on the list of tips to learn how to code from scratch is the principle of small bites. I have a friend who trains professional and Olympic athletes for Adidas named Mark Verstegen. Back when I used to train at his institute, he would always say something that really stuck with me. When any athlete presented a tough goal, such as qualifying for the Olympics or making it to the big leagues, he'd ask them, how would you eat an elephant? After the athlete would give him a confused look, he'd follow up by saying, it's not a trick question. The only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. This is great advice for many aspects of life. However, I've discovered it's especially important when it comes to understanding development. When I think back to when I started to learn programming, my greatest obstacles and challenges came when I tried to do too much at one time. For example, when I was trying to build new features, I'd attempt to code the entire feature at once, which really is a bad way of doing it. Most of the time, this would end up with a program not working, and then I'd have to go through every line of code until I figured out what was wrong. However, the more experience I become as a developer, the more I realize the importance of breaking concepts down into small, easy to manage chunks. Let's imagine you're building a connection to the Twitter API. Instead of trying to build the entire feature, focus first on connecting to the API. Then print out the values returned from Twitter. Finally, you can format the data so it looks nice. By breaking what you're learning into small components, you'll discover that you'll have a better understanding of the processes going on. You'll also be able to remember how to implement the features later on in real-world projects because the concepts will be more tangible. Next on the list are tutorials. Over the past few years, the online educational space has grown exponentially. Whether you're looking to learn Java or Ruby, you'll be able to find countless tutorials that help you understand programming. These types of tools most likely won't turn you into a professional developer by themselves, since achieving a professional level of skill takes years and typically requires you to work on a wide range of projects. However, tutorials can be a great introduction to programming. In addition to giving step-by-step -step guides for how to build applications, screencasts are also great for showing you what a particular language or framework is really capable of. When I'm learning a new language, I'll watch a full series of tutorials without even trying to build the code. I do this so I can familiarize myself with the capabilities of the language. One of the weaknesses for tutorials is that it's hard to replicate them in your own environment. For example, if you're working on a Java programming language tutorial from a few years ago, there's gonna be a good chance the instructor will have a different language version than you do. This will cause some confusing bugs and without any assistance, many individuals have quit their programming dreams completely just out of frustration. But don't let that scare you away from using tutorials. I credit a number of the guides that I've gone through with helping me teach myself development. And I highly recommend them as a great place to start, especially when you want to learn how to code from scratch. Next on the list is reading. I think libraries could be filled to the brim with the number of programming books that are on the market today. I've even written a few. I like going through coding books because they allow me to go at my own pace. When I go through tutorials, it usually means that I need to dedicate a specific amount of time to go through the videos each day. However, with a book, I can read a few paragraphs, or I can go through a few chapters. When you have a full-time job and you're learning programming on the side, books are a great resource. And this is mainly because they allow you to learn at your own pace. Books can also be a good resource later on when you need to reference a specific topic. One key item to note, when you go through a programming book, I highly recommend that you write and run the code from the book. 
This will help you remember the programming language syntax much better than simply reading it. Remember that reading retention is incredibly low in most individuals. However, if you combine reading with actually writing the code as you're going through the content, you'll see much better results. Another trick to use when reading programming books is to not look at the book when you're writing the code. For example, if you're reading my Ruby programming book, you'll see a code snippet like this when you're learning how to use object-oriented programming. If you force yourself to type the code without looking at the book the entire time, you'll discover that your retention will increase dramatically. Last on the list to learn how to code from scratch is building real-world projects. After you've gone through a number of tutorials and read a few books, you'll be ready to try your hand at building applications. A natural question to ask is, what types of projects should I build? There's really no right or wrong answer to this question. If you have an idea for a business, you could start with trying to build it with your newfound coding knowledge. You could also look at rebuilding current applications, such as creating a Pinterest clone. I found this technique of creating clone sites very beneficial since it allowed me to focus on building the functionality instead of having to waste time on coming up with ideas. For example, when I learned the Swift programming language, I built an Instagram clone. Years ago, when I was learning HTML and CSS, I recreated the Google homepage from scratch. The most important factor to remember about building real-world projects is to stretch yourself. No developer ever improved by duplicating functionality that they're already comfortable with building. Instead, make sure that you're challenging yourself to implement features that you've never created before. On a final note, don't let anyone tell you different. Coding is hard. From setting up a development environment to building functional applications, programming will greet you with challenges at every stage. However, with that being said, you can become a developer. There's no magical programming gene that coders are born with. It simply comes down to how determined you are, if you're willing to work consistently, and how good your strategy is when it comes to learning. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to learn how to code from scratch. In the show notes, I've included a number of resources for getting started as a developer. Also, if you sign up for my Krondos newsletter, you'll be sent a 200 plus page comprehensive Ruby programming book completely for free to help get you started.